Hey, what is up, guys? So today I'm going to teach you how to tune your guitar. What's what's that? Oh, okay. So wrong. Oh, should I not do that? Okay, my bad. All right, guys, my bad. I got a little mixed up. You know, I get my dates crossed. I don't know what video we're doing today. So I guess today I'm going to teach you guys the basics of Paint.net, a free-to-use open software, which is great for any of you creative. Uh, you know graphic designers out there it's free it's easy to use there's no learning curve and uh did i mention it's fucking free i i counted three again i i don't know i think i only had three fingers i don't know so let's uh let's go ahead and hop into the basics of paint.net i'm gonna give you guys a full run around of all the tools uh some cool plugin packs you can download and where to find them and just a quick rundown of the software in general and then maybe we'll move on from there and I'll teach you guys how to make just a couple of simple text-based logos. So yeah, let's hop into it. All right, so first things first, if we're gonna create um, a new image, all we have to do is go up here to the top left-hand corner, select new, it'll look like a page with a green plus arrow in front of it. We're gonna go ahead and click that. We're gonna hope, go ahead and open up. Um, I, like to, I like to do 800 by 800. Uh, it works best for me because I can size it up You know, if I need to. And it does really well for WWE 2K19 or any of the WWE 2K games, which is what I primarily make logos for. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. All right. Next, we're gonna use. Um, all right. So first and foremost, let's run over the tools so you guys can know what exactly you're doing and why you're doing it. So over here in the tools section, over here to the left, or yours might be in a different location. Um, I think I've already customize my layout a bit so yours might be a little different but just find your toolbar and if it's not uh, you can go to the right hand top right hand corner right up here you can see tools uh, history layers and of course the colors and if you click on these it'll bring up the pop-up menu for each of them um, you know up on your layout so you'll be easy really easy to navigate the software so okay let's go back to tools so first of all we have the rectangle select which is a great tool for just anything really just instead of you know really using the entire image and stretching it out you can just make a square and uh go over here to the transform tool which is right beside the rectangle select and then you can transform it do whatever you want with it and you only use this part that's selected you only move that part so you can do some really cool things with that and next up is lasso select a lot like the uh rectangle select although it's a bit more freehand you can do a lot more with it get around the turns curves all the edges that you can't with your ordinary rectangle select uh, i'll show you guys right here say i want to do this and the mayor want to open it up a bit give it like a nice curb and just complete it just like that and uh, also when you have anything selected in paint.net all you do is hit delete and you immediately erase it so it's really simple intuitive easy to use uh, next up we have the ellipse select exactly how it sounds just select but with a circle, uh, again, you can hit delete and immediately erase your selection. All right, zoom. Uh, zoom's pretty obvious. It zooms in and out depending on what uh, left or right click you use. Magic wand, which is a fantastic tool. I cannot tell you enough how life-saving this tool is. I wish every software had it. Uh, but yeah, let me go ahead and show you guys how to do it. So the magic tool, magic wand tool right here. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and click on the image we wanna select, the part of the image we wanna select. And it'll select all of that color it'll try to anyway and actually if you if you take if you hold down shift and then right click again actually on white and then you can select all the white on the screen throughout the entire image and of course you can change the tolerance a bit up here this will kind of give you you know more leeway of what it's gonna pick and what it's gonna select and what it isn't uh, but again you can hit delete and there you go you can pretty much delete anything you want with that. The magic wand is such a time saver, works great for deleting backgrounds and pretty much anything and just immediately selecting things you want. And uh, yeah, it's just a great all around tool. You guys who are familiar with uh, paint from Windows fame, um, paint bucket, pretty self-explanatory. I do is pick a color right here and just click on the screen. You're as good as gold. And if you wanted to fill in with the secondary color, I do is uh, right click. And there you go, perfectly perfect. It's uh, basically self-explanatory. I shouldn't have to go into depth on the paint bucket tool, but you know, there you go, there you go. It's a great and useful tool. 
Gradient, this one is a great tool. I actually really enjoy this one. You can actually use it to make some really cool gradient text effects on your all of your logos, and it looks just really cool when you use it right. Uh, so all you can do is select the gradient tool right up here, and it'll do a gradient of whatever your primary and secondary colors are, or you can do it um, like a transparency uh, thing. Like basically, instead of a, uh, what's it called? Uh, I have lost my trail of thought. What is this? Gradient. So instead of a gradient with the primary and secondary colors, you get a gradient with the actual image and it like just a gradient effect into transparency. Looks really cool and it looks really stunning and you can make some really cool things with it. All right, so we, again, we're just gonna select our gradient tool. We're gonna go ahead and click on the top left of our screen. And we're gonna bring it down just to get this nice gray, black and white gradient and all throughout the screen and it looks great. And that's all that you need to know about the gradient pretty much. The paintbrush. Okay, so the paintbrush is pretty self-explanatory. It just, just like paint.net. I mean, just like Microsoft Paint, it works the exact same way. Again, but there is a couple of cool things you can do with it. We're gonna turn the brush size up a bit to 55. We're gonna turn the hardness all the way down to zero. And we get this really cool spray paint effect that you can do. And it just makes it look really, cool and it actually looks really fluorescent uh, on my screen right now but that's basically all you need to know for paint rush uh, there's not a whole lot of brush settings for paint.net unfortunately if you want like major custom brushes and awesome presets uh, download Krita I'll leave a link to it in the description below is the eraser tool pretty simple again self-explanatory a lot of these tools are not easy to mistake with either of the other ones so just like it shows we're gonna select the eraser and we just erase whatever's on screen. Of course, you can mess with the hardness on it and you can get like a really cool, again, like really cool gradient effect. We're gonna go ahead and back out of that and delete this red lines that I created. Those look god awful. Next up, the pencil tool, um, just like the paintbrush tool, except this one only paints in a one by one pixel. So you only get one by one line right there. Just, the, the lines will only be uh, one pixel in, in diameter. Color picker. So this one's actually really useful. If you want to keep the same color palette throughout your entire image, all you have to do is select it right here, color picker, right beside pencil. And you're going to go to whatever color you want to select. You're going to go left click to select your primary and right click to select your secondary. And as you can see here, we got black and gray from the image. So it's really easy to contain your, your certain color palette that you want to keep throughout the entire image. It just really helps out. Next up, the clone stamp. Uh, this one's actually really cool too. Uh, to use this one, I do a select it, clone stamp right here, and you just hold control, you hit left click, and you've made your, you made your uh, anchor. And now you just go and paint over here, and as you can see, it takes whatever is in this circle and moves it and paints in the other circle with that. This works really good for doing uh, skin texture and anything like that. But yeah, it just gives like a really cool effect for blending and anything you need like that. Uh, just a really, really useful tool. Next up, we have Color Picker, uh, another useful tool, completely useful. I love this one, one of my favorites. Um, so uh, what we do here is basically we select Color Picker, I mean Recolor, my bad, Recolor. And we're gonna go with the, uh, whatever color we wanna change it to. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and more, turn the saturation and the, there we go. That looks pretty good. No telling how that's gonna look. But as you can see here, okay, see? Now as you can see, we only paint the gray. It only does the gray into a different color. Again, this is just a really useful tool to recolor anything in the image you wanna use. And uh, as with the other tools, you can also affect the hardness and the tolerance so you get like a different effect. As you can see right here. And yeah, it's just a really useful and uh, great to use tool. All right, next up we have text, another self-explanatory tool. It just, you'd be surprised what you can do with just a cool font and just regular text-based logos. I think they look quite the best, if I'm being completely honest. They're just really simple, really intuitive, and uh, it doesn't take a lot of work to do one. Uh, so let's go ahead and select our, t uh, our font right there. We're gonna bring it to 192 font size, and we're just gonna type in something random, SKC. And uh, I actually want a different color. So as you can see right there, and that's pretty self-explanatory. Again, you can use any font that you download to your computer and install. It'll show up on that list almost all the time. I've only had it happen 
once to where that font just didn't show up on the list and uh, usually it works pretty fine. Next up, the line and curve tool, another simple and intuitive one. Um, just all you do is select it and then go to where you want the line to start, left click and drag. And that's it, that's all it is. And if you wanna curve it, all you do is mess with the points a bit and there you go. It's just really simple and intuitive. The shapes tool, another easy to use, fun, uh, really cool tool. Uh, so basically all I do is select the bottom biggest tool on the menu right here down at the bottom. And uh, of course we can go up here and select whatever shape we want. I have a few shapes um, that have been installed in plugins. So you might not have all of these. You should have the basics, uh, the squares. You should have polygons and stars, I think. You should have arrows, I believe, and possibly call outs, but I'm not sure about those. Uh, everything else you guys will not see in your basic paint.net pack. Uh, you have to download some plugin packs, which I'll go over in a minute. All right, so we're just going to select a circle real quick. And yeah, it's basically exactly how it sounds. You just take and drag and create. And there you go. Place it wherever you want. And that's pretty much it. That's a, basically a rundown of all the tools in the toolbar of paint.net. Again, it's a really cool and intuitive software. And there's just a lot of cool stuff you can do with it. Um, so with that being said, uh, there's a lot of built-in tools that are, you know, you get like a lot of effects, a lot of adjustments. You just get a lot of really cool stuff like glow. I think this should come with your paint.net. You turn the radius up, you get like this really cool neon fluorescent effect and it looks really fucking dope. I really love it. Actually, we're going to go ahead and make that one uh, glow too. Yep, and it looks fantastic. I think I just got robbed. Okay, so on with the video. You know, the weird thing is, this is gonna go up before the super, before the 2K Online video, so it's not gonna make any sense, just so you know. He just threw away my title belt, if you guys wanna know what just happened there. So next up, I'm gonna show you guys how to install and use paint.net plugins. It's really simple and intuitive. I feel like I've said the word intuitive like 86,000 times in this video. So forgive me if I'm if my vocabulary is very limited, you know? I, I, I don't know, I don't tell you guys. I don't read dictionaries, you know? I'm not like Eminem. I don't have the, you know, just the amounts, amount of vocabulary that he does. Um, so anyway, uh, as you can see here, we have a list of quick plugin packs you can install. Anything with a star beside it right here will come with a free installer. Uh, again, this makes it really easy, really simple for you to set up. All you do is download. All you do is click on uh, whatever one you want, and you should have a download link. Pretty yeah, right around here actually. Actually, you know this is probably the best way to do it. Uh, but again, um, it's really easy. All you do is find one of the stars around it. It'll install it itself. And again, there's just a lot of really cool logos and not really cool logos. A lot of really cool plugins you can use for Paint.net. Again, makes your life incredibly easy. Uh, this is a great, again, a great open source software. I love it. If you want to support the creator of the software, I think he has a PayPal. And you can also buy the software on the Windows Store actually right now. It works completely well. I highly recommend it to any of you guys out there getting into graphic design. All right, guys, that's basically a rundown of the basics of paint.net. Just all you really need to know. Actually, you know, one more thing. Uh, so say if we're done with the uh, whatever image you want to create right here, we're going to go to image. We're going to flatten it. And we're gonna go file, save as, and we're gonna save it as a PNG. Now, if you're making a logo or any kind of design, PNG is best. If you wanna have a, if you wanna have and keep your transparent background, you know, that way you put it on the screen, it doesn't have like a white checkered board behind it, that would look like trash. All right, guys, you know, just make sure you save it as a PNG. Most important part of this, if you take anything away from this, just remember, save it as a PNG. So with that being said, I think that's pretty much all for the basics of paint.net. Um, I'll probably upload a video soon, just basic text-based logos. I think this video is ran too long. I think we don't make it, need to make it any longer than it already is. So we'll do that in a future video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you next time. And uh, as of always, guys, before you go, let me hit you with that too sweet brother, brother.